Margaret is a successful businesswoman who is speaking with an intern, Gwen. She tells her that her boyfriend makes fun of her. Margaret suggests that she should find someone better and that her boyfriend is a sadist. Back at home, Margaret has some fun with her junior colleague named Peter, who is a married man. She tells him that she has recently drawn after 22 years. Before that, she used to be so indulged in art that she would forget everything else. In the morning, she goes to her daughter Abby's room to wake her up. Abby is 18 and is soon going to go to college. After doing great at work, she gets home where Abby tells Margaret that she found a random broken tooth in her purse and Margaret throws it away. Abby goes to her friend's house while Margaret spends some time with Peter. During this, Margaret misses Abby's several calls. Margaret finally notices the missed calls and rushes to the hospital and we see that Abby has gotten into an accident with her bike while drunk and has already gotten stitches. She takes her daughter back home and after tucking her to bed, she apologizes for ignoring her calls. Abby says that it's all right, but Margaret is still upset with herself. The next day, Margaret again meets with Gwen who tells her that she has broken up with her toxic boyfriend. Margaret is happy to hear that Gwen has finally stood up for herself and says that she is really strong. Later, Margaret attends a conference where she notices a man and her confident demeanor quickly changes and she starts to have panic attacks. She leaves the room and rushes back home and goes straight to Abby's room to see if she is alright. After seeing that Abby is fine, she relaxes a bit but then cries in the bathroom. Abby later asks her mother if she is alright and asks if she could go to her friend's place. Margaret doesn't allow her and says that Abby needs to stay home as she is really worried about her. Next, we see Abby asleep on the couch while Margaret watches TV. A knock on the window alarms her, but upon inspecting, she finds nothing there. Then she notices the smoke coming out of the oven, and she opens it to find a charred, lifeless baby. She stares at it adoringly, but the baby begins to cry, waking Margaret up, and we find out that it was a nightmare. The next day they go shopping and Margaret tells Abby that she should dress like a confident woman but Abby says that she is strong and doesn't need clothes for that. Margaret soon notices David again and rushes her daughter back home. Abby gets upset and locks herself in the room. Margaret apologizes and says that she will make everything alright. At the office, Margaret is losing her calm and is not able to focus on her work. She goes to a park to cool off but David is also there. She walks up to him and asks him why is he back and tells him to go away. He seems confused and asks her who she is. Margaret keeps asking why has he come back. David suddenly says that Ben is with him in his belly. Margaret shouts that's a lie. David begins to walk away and she asks him what he intends to do. He calls her Margaret and says that he intends to go home. She asks him how he remembers her name now, to which David replies that she introduced herself to him and told him about Abby. Margaret is confused while David smiles and walks away, but a missing tooth is evident in his smile. Margaret goes to the police station and tells them that she was with David 22 years ago and separated, but now David has come back into her life and she feels threatened. She asks them to protect her family, but the cop informs her that they can only file a complaint and provide guidelines, as she only has seen David in public places and he doesn't have any previous record or any proof against him. Margaret gets upset and goes back home. She strengthens the locks in her house and takes out a gun hidden in her closet, while Abby is concerned with Margaret's sudden change of behavior. Later in the office, Margaret tells Gwen that she has done something unforgivable in her past. She met a 40-year-old named David on an island and became completely impressed by his charm. She soon moved in with him, and his love made her dependent, so she did everything he asked her to do. David called it kindness. If she failed to perform the tasks, David would tell her to punish herself with cigarette burns. She soon found out that she is pregnant, and despite David's disapproval, gave birth to Ben at home without any assistance. One day, he sent her to town, and upon returning, he told her that Ben is now with him in his belly. A distraught Margaret later managed to run away to America. Gwen thinks that this is some sick joke, and Margaret dismisses her, asking to forget about it. Later at home, Margaret thinks back to her encounter with David and remembers that he told her his hotel name. 
She begins to follow him and again confronts him, telling him to go back and to not hurt Abby. We also learn that Abby is a result of Margaret's random affair with the man she met at a bar. David continues to talk about how Ben suffers inside him. He tells her that he will go back if she offers some kindness and instructs her to quit driving and go to her work barefoot. Margaret declines the offer and says that she will kill him if he comes after her family, to which David says that if she kills him, she will end Ben as well. Ben leaves and Margaret manages to notice his room number through his key. She still follows David's instructions as we see her walking barefoot to the office. Later, we see Margaret having dinner with Abby, and Abby asks her to seek help, as she is worried about her mother's mental health. Margaret tells her to stay away from a man from her office named David Moore. Later, Margaret goes to David's hotel and finds out that there is no one there by that name. She gets to his room and finds her old drawing, her teenage picture, and her chain hanging on the wall. She soon finds a package and opens it to find Ben's bedsheet, which breaks her down and she begins to cry. The receptionist then arrives and screams at her to get out. Back home, Margaret sleeps with Ben's blanket and dreams of a shadowy figure coming closer to Ben, and she wakes up to see that her chest has gotten wet. Next, she tells Abby to text Margaret every hour and she'll even pay for it. She continues following David and decides to finish him. Later, Margaret goes home to meet Peter, who was invited by Abby. They are worried about Margaret, but she snaps and sends Abby to her room while she tells Peter that she doesn't need anyone's help and throws him out of the house. Later, she goes to Abby, who accuses her of lying, as is no one named David in her office. She tells her that David is someone from her past who wants to hurt her, and she promises that she will make everything all right. Abby still thinks that Margaret is lying and just wants to keep her captive in the house. She tells her that she doesn't feel safe with Margaret and warns that she will go away if things continue to be the same. Later at night, Margaret goes to shoot David but couldn't pull the trigger. David takes the gun and says that Ben is crying. Margaret could listen to Ben crying while David says that Ben was sad that his mom ran away, again taking control over Margaret. He says that Margaret broke her deal while trying to kill him, so she needs to perform another kindness. She would need to assume the position every night in the park until David tells her to stop. Later, she goes back home and is not feeling well. Abby informs her that she is leaving and Margaret tries to stop her but fails. She also sees Peter who wants to help, but she beats him. David confesses his love, but she tells him to stay away. Later at night, we see Margaret in the position in the park as David instructed. At the office, David visits her, which concerns Peter and Gwen. David says that even though she has made a good life out here, she has a hole in her heart that only Ben could fill. He tells her to meet him at night and leaves an address. Before leaving, Margaret records a video for Abby and says that if she is watching this, then things have gone horribly wrong, and she has left a letter for her explaining everything. Later, she meets David and feels Ben in his belly. She says that Ben is suffering and needs his mother, and attacks David with a hidden knife. He overpowers her by taking the knife away, but she uses another hidden knife to attack him while getting injured as well. David says that Ben feels bad about this, but Margaret ties him to the bed. He warns that Ben will also die if she kills him, but Margaret says that she will not let that happen. She targets his stomach and takes a surprisingly alive Ben out, hugging him in her arms. In the next scene, Abby is getting ready for college and goes to say bye to Margaret. She holds Ben and says that she doesn't feel scared anymore. Margaret watches them, and the film ends as the look of joy in her face gradually shifts to horror. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlists on the screen. Thanks for watching.